Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another Monday BS with me, Mariana Pickering. I'm your host from Emu Passive. And every Monday we get together here for just a little five minute dive into some particular topic that has to do with Passive House. And hopefully it interests you enough that makes you want to go research some more, potentially take some training with us, or, you know, just join the Passive House community. So what I want to dive into today is some of the things that I hear a lot from our builder students after they take their training with us to become certified passive house tradespeople. They're usually pretty pumped to get into their first passive house build. It can be a little bit frustrating for them, however, because the builder typically receives a set of plans with a whole bunch of decisions already made. So there are kind of three top things that I hear over and over again from the contractors, builders, tradespeople that go through our classes, um, kind of what they wish their architects and designers knew and absorbed a little bit better into their process. The first is just compactness of form. And unfortunately for builders and tradespeople trying to implement Passive House, this is where they've got least control over the process. So the most efficient form is gonna be just a box, right? But that can be kind of boring from an architectural perspective. I think a really good architectural designer who um, can meet the Passive House standard in a nice way is someone who can kind of separate in their design process and in their minds, the difference between designing the thermal envelope and designing some of the things that make a building more architecturally interesting, like uh, protrusions and you know semi-conditioned spaces sticking off of it that add some visual intrigue but being able to maintain the most simple form possible for the actual thermal envelope becomes really important to the builder who's trying to meet budget to hit that passive house level. Now, the importance of that increases exponentially the colder the climate zone you go. When you're in warmer climate zones, milder climate zones, you've got a lot more leeway there to be able to have more articulate architectural designs uh, and not have it impact the overall model as much. Model early and frequently, it is so important to get that energy model really, really going during concept design because a good modeler and a, a good consultant will help you inform what design changes you're making. So the second item that I think comes up a lot from our builders when they're talking about exchanging ideas with designers early on in the process is consolidating and minimizing the number of penetrations through the thermal envelope and air barrier. Uh, it has a really big impact on labor cost and the time spent in air sealing every single one of those holes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's often overlooked in the design phase or the, uh, the importance of it is overlooked. And you can really have quite a big impact on that as a designer. Okay, the third thing I want to bring up as an item that I very, very frequently hear from our builder students as a point of frustration, um, sometimes has a lot to do with supply chain stuff and not necessarily the architect or the designer, but something that the architect or designer should be very, very aware of. I had one student in a class just, uh, just recently who joked that you might wanna just order your windows and then design the building and build it because it's taking so long for windows to arrive lately. So we obviously are dealing with a lot of supply chain stuff right now that, um, that has to be considered and windows are not the only thing that are subject to that. However, given the importance of windows in a, an advanced building science context, um, I've said before several times that um, you know, windows can make or break a passive house project, especially in colder climates. Again, you get more leniency when you get down into warmer climates, but windows are really a lot more than just windows in a passive house. They act as your solar collector. Um, they can determine a lot about your thermal comfort um, in any project. So understanding what your window package is going to be based on the modeling that happens early on in a passive house process super, super important. And um, I think a lot of architects and designers maybe um, are used to putting off some of the decisions about window packages uh, until later in the process when they're talking about other finishes and things, because 
uh, you may have limited options on finishes based on the performance of the window that you want. And so all that really needs to be kind of discussed up front uh, with the client, um, with the builder, and make sure that, you know, especially in climate zones where the performance of the building is going to be so closely tied to a limited number of window package options, then you want to get that order in soon. You want to dedicate yourself to that. You want to make sure that that is kind of one of the limiting factors and one of the guiding principles, which is a better way to think about it than a limiting factor. But those windows should be one of the guiding principles of your design early on. The biggest takeaway that I think I would have for architects and designers looking to work with passive house builders is just the incredible impact that the initial concept design can have on decisions down the line. The longer an architect or designer waits to pull a builder into the process, the harder it's going to be for that builder to try to meet the passive house standard. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I am positive that there are many more items that aspiring passive house builders would really love for their architects and designers to know about. And builders that are watching, please add those to the comments. It's always great to have kind of more exhaustive list for designers who happen to be watching to read through. So please do add those. If you have any suggestions for other Monday BS topics, I'd be happy to cover them. Just a quick heads up to anybody who is considering any of our passive house training for builders. Um, today is the last day to sign up for the California boot camp happening at the end of the month in San Jose. Uh, and then this Friday on the 18th is the deadline for our next online crew. So if you're not interested in doing in-person training, but still want to learn all about the certified passive house tradesperson curriculum, we have an online option. Our spring crew is kicking off on March 24th, and the deadline for registering for that is this Friday on the 18th. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Really great to talk to you guys again, and I hope you all have a lovely building science -y week.